so this uh, video will uh, address the last couple of sections of the uh, chapter in calorimetry um, and this has got to do with the fact that the high specific heat capacity of water around 4200 joules per kilogram degree celsius uh, and its consequence in terms of phenomena around us and how we utilize the fact of the high specific heat capacity of water to our own advantage so i'll discuss two or three examples there are about uh, six examples given in the textbook i'd like to take up three one is the moderate climate near seashore so um, i'd like to take the example of two major cities which are there um, in uh, india which is close to the seashore uh, in fact there are three but we'll take the two metropolitan ones um, chennai and bombay so chennai and bombay um, are uh, cities which are respectively on the bay of bengal side and the arabian sea side and although some of you may not agree that the climate in these cities are moderate uh, if they were not located near the seashore then their temperature uh, their climatic conditions would probably be quite entirely different and the part that we are looking at is apart from the geographical factors the fact that there is a huge water body right next to them so what is the consequence of that see these cities are uh, let's say you know uh, just representing some buildings over here and there is a huge water body the ocean which is right next to it so this is the land part and this is the ocean part now what happens is that uh, when the heat energy from the sun insulation the solar radiation coming in um, falls over the ocean the water in the ocean obviously starts absorbing the heat now land in comparison to the water part absorbs much lesser uh, heat energy per degree celsius rise so the ocean uh, ends up accepting an enormous amount of energy and basically acts as a heat reservoir okay um now a consequence of this heat reservoir uh, being there right next to a landmass is that at night when the solar uh, radiation disappears then the fact that the ocean has heated up considerably creates a sort of um moderating effect on the climate so the, where the temperatures uh, at night time could have gone down quite a lot so when it is night the temperatures could have gone down quite a lot what happens is that the sea starts to give out the heat that it has absorbed during the day okay and that effect actually moderates the nightly temperatures all right and the same thing also obviously occurs in other coastal areas uh, and that is why having a large water body moderates the temperature for the uh, shore uh, uh, at the land end of things anywhere um, we could also say more or less the same thing for the chaskaman dam and the reservoir being near school that acts as a uh, reservoir for the heat okay so that is one way in which uh, water's high specific heat capacity affects climatic conditions and this has got nothing to do with what humans uh, do it's just the way nature turns out to be also um, as a result of this and you might have studied it in um, in geography in younger classes or perhaps even in 10th standard that this um, effect of the heat um, giving uh, the heat being given out by the water body affects uh, i mean causes basically the hot air to rise up and therefore there is an area of low pressure over here and therefore there is a breeze that is set up and uh, the breeze um, which then heads towards the land uh, moderates the temperature 
uh, in the evenings so early in the evenings you will find that people will flock to the beaches say for example because of the sea breeze that is coming in at that point of time now moving on to the uh, next example that i want to take uh, it is the third one in your uh, textbook which is water is used as an effective coolant uh, earlier when we when we made internal combustion engines for vehicles there was a problem in that because the internal combustion engine works on combustion principles uh, basically burning the fuel inside a cylinder the cylinder which is made of metal would also expand okay now this expansion of the metal parts has to be controlled so uh, I'll just draw a kind of rudimentary cylinder with a piston inside it and this piston uh, obviously has to move uh, up and down so the piston has to go up and down and uh, the combustion is essentially taking place inside this chamber um, i found that using red yellow and blue creates an effect that looks like combustion is taking place so now you cannot allow the heating of the uh, cylinders to take place in an uncontrolled fashion because this is made of metal if the cylinders and the piston starts heating up then there can be uneven expansion and obviously if there are gaps between the piston and the cylinder uh, or there is a, a distorted compression of one part or the other then there is a possible damage that that can happen to the uh, cylinder itself uh in fact um, the piston would get trapped inside the cylinder and we call that as a uh, seizure so the engine seizes okay and this can be catastrophic because basically your engine is gutted if a seizure takes place so the one way in which temperature can be controlled in this situation is by allowing a coolant to take away the heat from this okay so the design of the engine will be in such a way that while the piston is working water will be pumped around this uh, i have to sh i'll show that in blue so water will be circulated around this and what effectively the water would do is that the water would absorb the heat and we use water because of its high specific heat capacity right and the water would absorb the energy excess energy and make sure that the engine is working at its operating temperature and does not go far beyond if the water evaporates then we have a problem uh, early on uh, in internal combustion engines we had to fill water into the radiator in order to control that uh, thing so that water would eventually evaporate and therefore the water would have to be refilled modern internal combustion engines use uh, a chemical coolant which is a uh, large part water but they have also added some other chemicals inside it so it doesn't um, evaporate very easily and it's also a closed system so that the um, loss of the coolant in the system is reduced at a more simpler level uh, when we are doing machining uh, so say for example you have uh, a metal um, piece uh, which needs to be let's say drilled into okay so there is a drill and that drill has to uh, Uh, sort of uh, drill into this so this thing is spinning okay so you want to put a hole inside this basically or you want to cut it okay there can be a saw a band saw that is cutting through the metal to shape it into some other shape now uh, the metal that is used over here has to obviously have a higher uh, tensile strength than the metal that you are cutting so basically the metal that you are using for using for cutting has to be something that can bear the wear and tear better than the wear and tear of the metal itself that you are cutting because otherwise obviously the blade will become blunt and you will not be or blade or the drill bit will become bent and you can't cut into it but that depends a lot upon the temperature because obviously when you heat the metal and that's what's going to happen when you cut or drill this uh, metal bit and the metal itself is going to heat up okay there is going to be heat that is going to come out of this and when it becomes very hot um, the malleability of the metal changes so therefore the drill bit or the blades of the saw are going to become hot and become blunt 
Okay, and once they become blunt, then they are not going to be effectively drilling or cutting the metal. So what is usually done is that there is water that is poured onto this. Okay, so what happens is that the water pours onto this and it just kind of flows out, flows off the metal. But very importantly, the flowing water takes away part of the heat energy. Okay, and that again acts as a coolant that prevents the bit from becoming blunt due to the heat. The third example that I want to talk about is uh, a practical application. So this uh, coolant part of it is also a practical uh, application of the fact that water has a high specific heat capacity. And the third one is that farmers who are doing open land agriculture in um, cold zones. So places in the plains like, uh, plains, like for example, the Indo-Gangetic Plains, huge area in which agriculture is done, uh, in the winter times suffers frost conditions. Okay, so basically what happens is the nighttime temperature drops so quickly that the moisture that is there in the plants, so the plants uh, that are growing, in fact, all kinds of life forms, um, they are fundamentally uh, made up of water. Okay, a large part of the plant structure is water. So when there is frost like conditions, what can happen is that the water inside these plants can freeze up. Okay, so when the water freezes up, when the temperature drops to nearly zero degree Celsius, then the water inside the plants uh, go to a very low temperature and that can obviously cause cell damage to the plants. And if there is cell damage to the plants, then your yield is going to do go down or your crop can get completely destroyed. So when farmers um, know that because of agrometry, if they know that there is a forecast that the temperature tonight uh, is going to go nearly to zero degree Celsius or below 10 degree Celsius or whatever the case, case may be, what the farmers do is that they flood the field with water. Okay, so I'll use a darker color for the water. So they flood the fields with water. So the space between the plants is occupied by water. Now what happens is that water, which has a high specific heat capacity, starts losing the energy. When the, when the ambient temperature drops and goes somewhere below 10 to 0 degrees Celsius, then the plants, uh, sorry, the water which is there in the field starts losing energy and that energy which is being released from under the plants keeps the plants warm okay so effectively what happens is that the water within the plants themselves do not become cool down to those frost like temperatures and therefore the crop can be protected so this is again uh, something that um, utilizes the high uh, the fact that there is a high specific heat capacity of water and that high specific heat capacity of water can be used for a certain purpose so that kind of covers uh, the uses of high specific heat capacity of water and we can go now to the last section 11.12 which says that some examples of high and low specific heat capacity uh, the first one is the base of a cooking pan is made thick Okay, so the reason why I'm mentioning these points is that uh, one thing is it illustrates well what is the high specific heat capacity of water and in what way is it useful for us. The other is that um, these questions are often asked in the board examination in terms of explanation for how uh, you utilize the fact of the high specific heat capacity of water. So in terms of a cooking pan which is used for cooking, um, the base is made up of usually a different kind of metal. If you look at your cooking pans a little more closely, you will find out. Um, and uh, th there is a reason behind it. The reason is that um, the base is made thick so that it absorbs energy. So it absorbs the energy from the fire. Okay. And it distributes the energy. Okay. The me metals have low specific heat capacity which means that it will undergo a greater rise in temperature for a certain amount of energy that is used. And then it will also distribute it well because they also are good conductors of heat. 
Now, having absorbed the heat, the base of the pan remains hot for a longer period of time because there is more mass in it. Okay, so once you take the pan off the fire, also the food stuff which is kept in it is going to be kept at a higher temperature, and therefore um, is good for us because if it's at a higher temperature, then it is nice to eat. So that is one application. Um, the second one that I want to discuss is um, the base of an electric press is made thick and heavy. And basically, it follows the same principle. So if you have an electric ion, uh, say something like that, looks like a shoe, but I want to say that this is an electric ion that is used for pressing. Again, the base of it is made with a certain kind of metal, and that metal absorbs energy, distributes it well, and keeps it warm for a longer period of time. So these uh, applications of the high specific heat capacity of water and the examples for the high and low specific heat capacities of different substances that you need to remember two to three points because these often form uh, one or two mark questions that are asked in the board examination. So we will stop here. With that, we come to the end of this chapter.